everyone welcome back to my channel so this video is so special i'm gonna walk you through you world anatomy questions i'm gonna show you how to solve them using the ken hub atlas i'm gonna go through the pictures together and big surprise ken hub gifted you guys three giveaway tickets um, so we're going to choose three out of you guys to take a full month of GenHub Premium. And even if you don't win, I still have a good 10% discount link for you guys in the description if you want to subscribe for a month. Uh, so you would be lucky enough if you actually got the giveaway for a whole free month. And also use the 10% so that you actually get two months. Anyway, I'm going to uh, talk to you guys about the steps for uh, to win this giveaway by the end of this video. Let's just now talk about the anatomy questions. So the three high yield points that any US assembly question will ask about with anatomy. Uh, they're literally not going to ask you about anything other than that are the uh, fractures. Fractures are very high yield. Radiology in general, whether x-ray or CT, rarely MRI pictures, and nerve supply. So those are the three um, high yield topics you should focus on in anatomy in general. All right, let's start with the first question. So a 52-year-old man comes to the office due to right shoulder pain. He is an avid golfer but has been unable to play for the past three months due to the pain. Lately, he has started to interfere with his daily activities such as getting dressed. An MRI shows thickening and calcification of the supraspinatus tendon. Which of the following shoulder actions is most likely to provoke pain in this patient? Now, as you can see, guys, it's it's saying an MRI shows something, but it's not actually showing you what this MRI or like it's not actually showing you this MRI. And in the end, you can be you can be surprised that in the exam it will show you it can show you an MRI and you you know nothing about. Maybe you just skimmed over this question and didn't really. Um, didn't really look any further uh, so it's a good idea to have an atlas next to you and I'm gonna show you guys uh, the can hub atlas so you just look up here supraspinatus tendon in the search box and it's gonna show you illustrations and radiology and cross sections of this muscle so that you can actually imagine for yourself so here, for example, uh, this is a key that shows you how this section is taken, guys. So here I'm on the side, all right, and I'm taking a coronal section all the way through the shoulder joint. And it's highlighting here in green the supraspinatus tendon that the question was talking about, all right. So as you can see, here is the shoulder joint, and here's the supraspinatus tendon lying in between the uh, chromium and the um, scapula, the, the chromium process, uh, and the head of humerus. So the supraspinatus tendon is some sort of trapped in between these. So if anything happens here, calcification for example, um, it's going to be impinged. And as you can see here is the MRI that we were lacking in the question. So now you know where to find the supraspinatus highlighted here in green. This, by the way, is the head of the humerus. And here's the deltoid muscle around it. It's very nice that they showed you the key to um, the orientation or how this section is taken at which level. Also, here is a cadaveric picture so that you can see everything from all sides, radiology, illustrations, and cadaver. So here is the head of humerus, and here is the scapula, and here is the supraspinatus. All right, this is also the deltoid. Essentially, guys, you should imagine radiology or like CT scans and MRIs as like imagine them in the eyes of anatomy because as you can see here the cadaver taken in cross section is exactly the same as this right all right and here is an illustration showing you guys the here is the supraspinatus muscle and here is the supraspinatus tendon so if you raise your arm up 
as shown in this picture, you will see that the supraspinatus tendon is going to be trapped between the acromion of scapula and the head of humerus. And that's essentially what the question is asking. So you can go and play as you, mu as you can with um, these MRI images. But if I should go back to the question, I'm going to show you guys that the question was really asking which of the following shoulder actions is most likely to provoke pain in this patient. Right, so we've already seen what shoulder actions uh, like raising your arm up in abduction is likely to impinge um, the uh, supraspinatus tendon between the head of humerus and um, the acromion of scapula. And that is exactly what this picture shows. I got you uh, this picture, guys, so you can imagine how a golfer is likely to develop this because he's always raising his hands up and um, stressing this tendon. All right, let's move on to the next question. So, like I said, guys, radiology, fractures, and nerve supply are the two three high yield points you should focus on with anatomy. So here, as you can see, it's showing you a radiology and it's asking you to choose. So a 32 year old male presents to the ER with sudden onset heart palpitations. His blood pressure is 100 over 70 and his heart rate is 160 per minute with regular rhythm. What do you think this patient has? This is tachycardia, regular rhythm. He's a young guy and heart palpitations. Most likely this is a case of paroxysmal supraventricular tachycardia because it's irregular and that is why he's feeling these palpitations. So if you guys remember that the first line treatment for supraventricular tachycardia actually is to activate the vagus by the Valsalva maneuver. And so that's essentially what the physician asked the patient to do, the Valsalva maneuver to relieve these symptoms, which the font structures indicated on pelvic CT image below is most important in the Valsalva. So he's asking about the most important muscle involved. And note here, guys, pelvic CT. You always wanna um, note which section through which um, cut section this is taken, okay, because this can help you expect what you can see. Like, for example, if it's a section through um, the abdomen, you're going to see the colon and different structures than if it is through the pelvis, right? Uh, so you always need to take note of where, the orient where this is taken. I'm going to show you these guys in the atlas uh, right now, but let's just... Uh, find out what exactly the Valsalva is. So essentially what happens in Valsalva is that you increase intrathoracic pressure and you also increase intra-abdominal pressure by closing the glottis. You like inhale but hold your breath just and strain just like you would while taking a bowel movement. This is enough to increase intrathoracic pressure and intra-abdominal pressure. Now in order to do this you need to contract muscles, right? And the most important muscle involved here the one that will push push inside the abdomen and increase intra-abdominal pressure so much is the muscle here on the anterior abdominal wall called the rectus abdominis. Now, it might be hard for you guys to imagine it in a pelvic CT, right? Um, so I'm gonna show you guys right now in the atlas. So if you just look up in the search bar, rectus abdominis muscle, you just look up anything in the search bar, you're going to find it. And here is a diagram showing you this muscle in action. This is actually how you do sit-ups, guys. If you try to, doing sit-ups, you're going to know that this is the muscle that helps you push your stomach in. Okay. And here is a cross section through the abdomen. It's a little bit above the pelvis uh, showing you the rectus abdominis in the anterior abdominal wall and here is the abdominal cavity with the kidneys here is the vertebrae so it's major right you can see here that this section is taken at a little bit higher level than the one shown in the um, than the one shown here in the question anyways here comes the picture of pelvic CT that we want to look at. 
Uh, here are the rectus here is the rectus abdominis muscle again and here is showing you its relationship with the breast and here is a sagittal section to help you guys understand the valsalva so this muscle when it contracts it's gonna push inward when it pushes inward it's gonna increase intra-abdominal pressure right at the same time inhaling with valsalva it's gonna push the diaphragm down and so this is gonna narrow this space and increase the pressure even more and that's how it stretches with pregnancy all right and here is a top view it's showing you guys that here it's, it's a top view of the pelvis and how this muscle is related and here is a cadaveric image at a, a little bit higher level you can see here uh, it's if the liver is showing then obviously it's higher and yeah we're going down we're going down and here is the picture so you see guys here it's very high okay and then it's going down gradually the, the liver is disappearing and the kidneys are appearing so we're going down right and then we're going down all the way down at the level of the pelvis or even lower and that is probably the cross section we were shown in the pelvic ct image all right so here are the muscle like just the trace of these muscle here right here this is probably the image we were shown i think it's very similar to this one guys yeah this one is very similar okay and here it's in a female showing you this is a female anyway now you know guys that the answer choice is a a is the correct answer choice the rectus abdominis muscle is going to push in and increase intra-abdominal pressure obviously this one will not do anything this is the psoas this is the iliopsoas and uh it can't help itself actually because we need something from the outside to push in to increase the intra-abdominal pressure but this is already behind or already inside so no okay so the rectus abdominis guys the most important in valve cell and so that's how you imagine it through the hours so now to the big moment guys i'm going to show you now how you can take part in this giveaway and win the chance of a ticket of ken hub premium uh three of you guys will win we have three tickets available and even if you don't win still you got a 10 percent discount if you follow the link in the description can share the video with anyone you think is in need of this because i know how anatomy can be like a pain especially first year med school anyway so step number one subscribe and like the video step number two comment down below why you want to be a doctor and that's a very important step guys in this giveaway comment why you want to be a doctor and leave your email in the comment so that i can contact you or maybe i'm gonna send ken hub your email so that they can send you the giveaway all right guys so i hope you like this video and in another video i'm gonna announce the winners and i might also uh, i'm gonna still update you on instagram as well and i'm gonna also um make uh, if you want, I'm going to make another video of anatomy questions and walk you through the atlas uh, if you like. So, yeah, 